Recently, I was working on a project where I wanted to show off Facebook's new fast text, text classification open source library. And I wanted to do so in a way where I could have a front end where a user could input something and then receive a response and, and consume that in some intelligent way and show some stuff off. And there wasn't a lot of really great tutorials out there about how to do this, so I had to kind of pick some things together. So I wanted, now that I know how to do it, I wanted to throw this out there so that you can get a quick and easy playground or sandbox where you can play around with this and really get to know the strengths of fast text. So this is really fun. Like I said, it's gonna be really quick. This is not how you'll want to actually set up an application, but this is one way you can do it if you wanna be doing something on the front end and have fast text run in the back end. So first off for prereqs, you're gonna need a Mac or a Linux box, or if you're on Windows like me, set up a Linux virtual machine. This is because FastX has C++ compiling it needs to do, and so I couldn't really find another way around that. And to do this, I decided to use Node.js and this Node.js wrapper that somebody wrote for FastX, and it works really well, so that's what we're gonna be doing. So you can set up your Node project however you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it like this. We'll create a new folder. And in the terminal, we'll go ahead and do an npn init-y to accept all the defaults. And now that we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and install things because I know what I need to install to get my index.js to work. The only main thing you're gonna need is this Node.js wrapper, and that is called node-fasttext. Not to be confused, just confused with some other ones out there that I couldn't get to work, but this one works. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then, like I said, you can set this up however you want to, but I'm using Express, so I'm gonna install that. And I was having some cores issues, so I'm gonna go ahead and install that. All right, awesome. Now, if you want to get this sandbox up and running pretty quick, you can go ahead and use my uh, HTML and JS file, and I'll have a link to that in the description of my video. Just so you know what's in these, the HTML just has a form where you can input some text, and that text will be sent to our Node.js server to be consumed um, by fast text. And then the index.js is where we start using fast text. So you can see here we're setting up the input for our model that we're going to train, and I'm using this file called train.txt. Now you can of course use whatever training data that you want and you can make your own even. I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like on the inside. This is the free one that's provided on FastText official tutorial for Stack Exchange cooking section. But you can see you could easily make your own and I did for my project. You do underscore underscore label underscore underscore the name of the label and you can add multiple labels and then a string of text that is related to those labels. And of course your model is gonna be better with the more data that you have to train and then validate on. Okay, so that'll be our input. And then here we're training it. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about how these things work um, because you can see them on FastX documentation. And then I have some express code that is gonna grab the value out of my form and then send that to this function. That will make a prediction based off of the model that we train. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start it. And you'll notice right off the bat that it loads the data that it wants to train to create the model. Now, obviously you wouldn't necessarily want to do this every time the application starts up, but in my case for this quick and dirty method, I want to show it, especially if you're making constant changes to your data. Another thing to note is I'm not really training this data very well um, because I don't have any sort of validations going on. And once again, FastX documentation talks more about that. And that's what you'd want to do, but this is just so you can get playing with it pretty quick. Okay, it's finished and we can see it's now the server's up and running, listening on port 8000. So if we go there, we see our form and because this is a stack exchange for cooking, I'll say baked potatoes and make sure I spell it right this time. Awesome, you can see the response come back as an array of the classifications and its confidence in each of those values. And this could be consumed however you want on the back end to display something to the user, or you could spit it directly back out to the user 
whatever you wanted to do. I wanted to leave this part completely blank um, because I assumed it would be totally different for everybody. And this is where you can really start playing with it anyway. So I hope that's helpful for you. It's super quick, super dirty, but it'll help you get started with this super cool open source text classification library that can really impress your friends or your teachers or for whatever project you're trying to do. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks so much for watching.